Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on a final Kalamata analysis, a practical approach using ANSYS. So, I am Shankar, Assistant Professor of Mechanical from KRJ College of Engineering, Madurai. So, before starting any analysis, I will always suggest to see the steps involved in FA analysis using any FA software. So, basically, the steps can be categorized as pre processing, processing, and post processing. So, the majority of the users work lies in this stage of pre-processing and these are the subcategories right? and the solution is it is done using the computers and post-processing is just viewing the results right? so this is a series of video tutorials so far we have completed completed the structure and also in the thermal we have completed the 3d pin and the 2d composite wall cylinder of sphere now we are going to see the thermal analysis so we are going to analyze the temperature distribution in a composite wall uh, using 1D element, right? So it's going to continue further uh, for dynamic and coupled analysis. You can find the videos. Uh, now I'll directly go to my problem for thermal analysis using 1D elements. Okay? So this is my composite wall. I have three layers: the innermost layer uh, of 5 centimeter uh, width and uh, 2 centimeter and 1 centimeter, and their corresponding thermal conductivity is 45 pi and 0.5 watt per meter kelvin. And uh, the innermost temperature is 900 degrees Celsius with the convectivity transfer coefficient of 150 watt per meter square Kelvin. And the outermost is at 30 degrees Celsius atmospheric temperature and the convection is 20 watt per meter square Kelvin. And the height of this uh, wall is 10 centimeter and the third dimension thickness is 2 centimeter. Right? Uh, so which means the cross section area is 20 centimeter square. We have already seen that, seen that how to draw this problem in 2D analysis. Right? Now we are going to see how to solve this in 1D. So for 1D, we will use link uh, conduction and convection uh, for this problem. And the material property is going to be thermal conductivity. And for section properties, we are going to uh, model the problem as 1D is uh, only and hence uh, a sectional area has to be given in the real concept. Right? So the modeling the problem, I am going to model uh, this uh, uh, thickness, 5 cm thickness of the line. And this two centimeter thickness is this line, and this one centimeter. Line. In addition to this, I'm also going to model this convective heat transfer coefficient as uh, one more line, and this convective heat transfer coefficient as one more line of uh, uh, length to be the equal to the nearest length, which is five centimeter in this case, and also uh, in this case uh, one centimeter, which means from 0 0.08, I'm going to add one more for one centimeter, which is 0 0.09. And this pink color line this, this represents the convection. So you can see the corresponding lines representing each and every case. And once I model this problem, I'll give a cross section area of uh, 20 to 10 to the power minus 4 meter square, which is 20 centimeter square, right? And uh, the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that the convective heat transfer coefficient is also modeled as a line in uh, uh, 1D problem, 1D uh, analysis of thermal analysis. And the length of that convective heat transfer coefficient should be the length of the nearest uh, link. Here the nearest uh, wall is 5 cm, hence this convection is also 5 cm. Here the nearest wall is 1 cm, hence the nearest convection this is also 1 cm. Right? So this is how I am going, going to model this problem. Once the modeling is done, I am going to mesh. Here uh, each and every line corresponds to their uh, own, own significant uh, uh, materials characteristics. So I am going to add the individual material attributes, then I am going to divide and mesh. And finally, uh, boundary conditions of this point. That's going to, uh, I'm going to apply a uh, temperature of 900 degrees Celsius, and this point I'm going to apply a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, and then I'm going to solve. Right? So now let us see how to solve the same problem in ANSYS. Right? So let me take this up. I'll go to ANSYS 19.0 and open the cancel APD. So once the APDL is open, go to group consist, uh, click on thermal, OK. Now click processor, element type, add edit. So again, click on add. Now we are going to model a 1D problem. So select link. Here it has three options, convection, convection, and radiation. We are not going to have any radiation. We are going to have only convection and convection. So initially add convection, OK. Next again add, click on convection, OK. So the link 33 element corresponds to 
conduction and the link 32 to 34 which corresponds to convection right now let me close this as this is a one dimension problem i have one dimension analysis i have to give the cross section area so go to add and click on one link and i have to add my area and my cross section area for the problem is 20 to 10 to the power minus 4 find it here Here it is 20 centimeter squared. So I'm also I'm going to keep the unit as my SI unit. So it is 20 to 10 to the power minus 4 meter squared. So my unit is 20 e minus 4 meter squared. Because of so one area is enough because uh, the through the uh, section or the uh, cross section area for all the link it is going to be same. So hence I'll add only one and I'll click on close. Now I'll go to material properties, material models, and here the materials that I'm going to add are. I have to add this convective coefficient as a material, even though it is not a metal property, uh, I have to add it as a material uh, value. So one, this is one material property, this is the second one, this is the third, fourth, and this is again this convection is fifth, right? So previously in 2D, we would not have added this convection as a material property, as convection is not a material property. Uh, of course, it depends on the material, but it also depends on other factors. Hence, we will directly apply the convection as a loading condition. But in 1D, uh, this is one thing that you have to do because you have to apply the uh, convection as a metal property. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 things that I have to add. So, metal model number, thermal. Here under the convection, you have to give the convection. First convection value is 150 watt per meter square Kelvin. So, my value is 150. And my unit system is SI unit, so watt per meter square Kelvin. That's what I am that's going to be the same. Okay. So, this is my first convective position. Okay. Next material, new model, okay, this is the second conduction, now the second material that I am going to add is 45, then 5 and 0.5, these three are the, are the conduction values, so under conduction isotropic, first is 45 watt per meter Kelvin, okay, then material, new model, click on okay, so the third model, I am going to have 5 watt per meter Kelvin, so 5 watt per meter Kelvin, okay, then material, new model, okay, and the next model that I am going to add, it is, 0.5 watt per meter Kelvin, so 0 0.5 watt per meter Kelvin, okay. Then material new model, okay. And the last material, it, uh, it's not a material, but I have to add this convection as a material property, which is 20. So under the last material, convection is 20 watt per meter Kelvin, okay. So these five metals correspond to first one is convection, this one is convection, 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 and the last one is convection. So convection, uh, so we can find here number. Number one is convection, the most convection. 2 is 45, 3 is 5 watt per conduction, and uh, this is 0.5 conduction, and 5 is the uh, rightmost conduction. Once all this is done, close this. Now, uh, I don't need to add any section. We have uh, given the real constants here. I'll go to modeling, create, key points, and active So, my first rate is going to be minus 0 0.05, 0, 0, 0. So, my first key point is going to be minus 0 0.05. 0, 0, 0. So I don't need to give that as you can apply. So that's my first point. And my second is 0 apply. And my third point is 0 0.05 apply. Uh, and my fourth point is 0 0.07. Fourth point is 0 0.07 apply. And my fifth two point is 0 0.08. Point is 0 0.08 and my last six point is 0 0.09. Okay. So these are all the points. Here you can find so 0 0.00, 0 0.05, 0 0.08, 0 0 0 0 0 0 and finally 0 0.09 from 0 0.0. 0 0. So once this is done, I have to join all this with the help of lines, straight lines. So this is first point, this 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 point. This point, this point. Once the modeling is done, go to meshing. So mesh attributes. So pick the lines. So let me select the first line. This is the line corresponds to the convection. So I have to click on OK. Under the material, so the first material corresponds to the leftmost convection. So this is OK. Rail constant, let it be the same. And the element, uh, instead of 33, I have to select 34 because it is a convection element, right? So select convection. I don't have any section, so leave that and I'll click on apply. Right? And next select the second line. Click on apply. Uh, the material number is 2. 
perfection remains the same and my it is a conduction element so i have to select the conduction link 33 is for conduction link 34 is for convection so now apply then the third one apply now i have to go for third material number and the real constant number is same and the conduction is also same uh, apply and then four to five apply and material number is four or uh, element type was uh, again conduction real constant everything remains same apply and finally the last name uh, change the material number to 5 which rather corresponds to the last conduction and change the link to link 34 and off. once the meshing uh, mesh attributes is done go for size control and what says lines all lines let uh, each line be divided into 100 elements ok now mesh lines select all the lines all 5 out of 5 have been selected and click on home. so meshing has been done once the machine is done, go for loads, define loads. I have two bond condition. In the leftmost this point, I have to apply 900 degrees switches. Here I have to apply 30 degrees switches. So go for define loads, apply normal, temperature, uh, key points, at the leftmost point, apply. I have to give a temperature of 900 degrees switches. So 900, apply. And under, under the rightmost key point, in the rightmost one, I have to apply temperature of 30 degrees switches and okay. Once the temperature is applied, just solve the problem. Solution solved from Douglas and okay. I just don't worry about the specific corners. Yeah, solution is done. So once the solution is done, you can see the results, general both processor, processes, counter clock, normal solution, take the device solution, normal temperature will come. Okay, so here you can find the temperature is uh, keeping on varying and uh, it's moving along here right so if you can't uh, here we can find the varying temperature save this image go for clock control right metal file invert white or black and save this image also if you want to if you want to view the results in uh, uh, 2D, go for cross controls, hide, size and shape, display of lines on, it's on OK. Uh, so as there are large number of elements, that's why you are seeing this uh, quite nice. Maybe I can change that. Uh, go to session editor. Yeah, here the element size is 100. Let me change that to state 10. Okay, and there is very good. I think here you will be able to see a little bit more uh, color results. Even if you can see some more white lines, maybe I can even reduce the number of elements to say two elements. Just I'll keep two elements. I'll just keep even one element. I'll click on OK. Yeah, here I have just modeled the problem. Just uh, each and every line corresponds to only one element. And you can see a smooth variation in temperature along the uh, graph as you have seen in uh, 2D, right? So, but you have not done 2D, you have just uh, done 1D. If I switch this off, go to uh, the spare elements on, and now this is just 1D. Uh, only for viewing the results, you can go to uh, 2D, but actually, we have solved the problem in 1D with the help of just only one element uh, with uh, each and every link, and you can uh, view a beautiful color 2D plot of this uh, problem, right? Similarly, uh, so this is how we can solve a, a thermal analysis problem in 1D. So as similar to this, you can also solve uh, the problem. Uh, this is a composite wall problem. You can also so also solve problems related to uh, composite uh, 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 cylinder, and also you can also solve problems related to composite sphere. The only thing is that the cross section data has to be uh, correspondingly given. Here the cross section data is the uh, 10 centimeter cross 2 centimeter. Here the cross section data has to be the inner circumference of the cylinder and uh, the mid layer uh, once. Right? So as you go, you have to change the cross section uh, real constant values. It can't be constant. So the inner cross section uh, is for this convection. Then uh, take the mid radius for this section by centimeter and give that as the cross section for this layer. And, and for this layer, uh, layer, take the mid section for this layer and calculate the circumferential area and give the cross section here. And for this layer, calculate the mid section area and calculate the circumference for that uh, radius 
and give it as a cross sectional real constant and for the final uh, uh, convection the outermost uh, radius should be given as the circumferential area as the cross sectional area right similarly for sphere we can do the same thing right uh, by giving the by varying the real constant values by giving multiple real constant for each and every uh, uh, every section you will be able to get the uh, the uh, one dimensional analysis for composite cylinder and box right uh, so this is all uh, for following a uh, one dimensional uh, thermal analysis and answers right so until again uh, let us see uh, let us let me see you in uh, some other video so signing off is Shankar. see you bye stand up always one more thing if you have any doubt always by contact me right thank you